Hey guys, and welcome to the Working Money Channel. More of the same on this fine Sunday morning. Market cap right now holding at about $1.2 trillion for the entire crypto space and Bitcoin dominance uh, still holding on 46%. We got Bitcoin trading right now at 29,600. Uh, it's up 0.2%. Ethereum trading right now about 1,786. It's up only about 1.3%. Um, and we got XRP down here trading just shy of 40 cents. And it's up a little bit more, 1.45%. But by and large, guys, you can see, uh, you know, the majority of the crypto market uh, up by a little bit, down by a little bit. We aren't seeing those huge swings yet, but I think we're going to be coming into that very, very soon. I don't actually think that this bear market is going to be as long and excruciating. If you guys were with me on that journey throughout 2018 and mostly through 2019, because they are getting shorter and shorter, those bear markets. Uh, some technical analysts here on Twitter have been noticing the same thing. When looking at the long-term Bitcoin chart, we can see that the bearish periods are shorter than the rising periods. This is coming from Ether Naciona L here on Twitter. Bitcoin, which has dropped more than 80% in the previous correction seasons, hasn't dropped that much yet. So he's just bringing up the Bitcoin chart. And you guys can see here the Bitcoin drop over that last period was only about 60.86%. Uh, compared to what we saw back in 2018, 84.12% and then uh, way back here uh, in 2014, 2015, we saw a Bitcoin drop 86.9%. So, you know, some would say, oh yeah, but that would mean that, you know, Bitcoin still has to drop about 25% to get down to these same values here at 84, 85% drop. Um, but this isn't taking into account the 89% rule that I've uh, discussed on this channel a few times now, basically insinuating that uh, this bottom here, Bitcoin has found its bottom, has found its support level. And uh, right now we are seeing that. Again, we could see a Bitcoin go a touch lower, but um, you know, essentially this measured move would suggest that the correction for Bitcoin is in, that we're not actually going to see much more of a drop than this. And uh, that would mean that, you know, essentially if this is the bottom of the market for Bitcoin, that would mean that this is the bottom of the market for cryptocurrencies like XRP as well. Although I guess anything could happen technically. Um, but you know, if we were to consider that uh, all cryptocurrencies, all altcoins are just following Bitcoin, well then, you know, this would be considered the bottom for most altcoins, meaning XRP at 39 cents, probably a very, very good opportunity to purchase. Um, and again, you know, I was purchasing XRP all throughout this time period, all throughout this time period that my first purchase was right over here in and around here so it would have been december roughly december 2020 it was it was after this first leg up and i think i averaged out at 72 cents but since then the bear market was my opportunity to cost average down to about 22 cents which is right where that line is so uh, I took the opportunity to buy a lot down and around here. I was also buying along the way, you know, thinking, you know, okay, it's this drop here that's going to be the end of the bear market. And, um, you know, I've learned a lot since then. Cost averaging down, though, uh, has really done me well over the last couple of years because, as you guys can see now, even though we are sitting at 39 cents, I'm still above water on my XRP stacks. And so, um, I mean, you guys can do the same. I mean, if you purchased your XRP at 51 cents or if you cost averaged at 95 cents or 75 cents or wherever you are, um, you know, now's a great opportunity to buy getting in at a lower point if you truly do believe in this crypto which um i mean i have accumulated over i just calculated it over 50 times the xrp that i had when i first purchased my first little small bag of xrp in 2017 so i mean you know it is a cryptocurrency that is going to change the world no doubt about that so it might be a good opportunity to cost average now guys um leonidas here on twitter brought this up so a bank partnership here that was announced back in september of 2021 they apparently just updated their site this has to do with vidanova bank and so um here's their website here for international payments your right partner vidanova bank is the right partner for your international transactions we provide fast and cost effective of payments in US dollars, euros, British pounds, and uh, Aruban florin. So the Aruban uh, currency. Uh, and if you guys notice right down here, yeah, blockchain technology, they added a section here recently. Vidanova Bank provides access to RippleNet, the decentralized global network of banks and payment providers. With this technology, you can message, clear, and settle financial transactions in real time, uh, paving the way to send money globally in one frictionless experience. RippleNet connects banks, payment providers, digital asset exchanges, and corporations with the most advanced blockchain technology for global payments financial institutions are able to execute transfers to a growing number of institutions so they just recently updated that um sounds as though even though they had partnered with ripple back in september that uh, maybe they weren't um actually utilizing the technology to the fullest potential and finally quarter one 2022 into quarter two of 2022 maybe that has finally changed so uh we heard about the partnership last year 
Finally, they are updating this on their website. Thanks to Leonidas for pointing that out. Also wanted to bring this up, guys, from the light shines in the darkness at Matthew L-A-N-Y here on Twitter. The House of Lords is in complete support of Ripple and XRP. So this was a document from back uh, last year as well, late last year. Um, but it was interesting because they mentioned Ripple Labs here right on the first page. Ripple, written evidence, central bank digital currency inquiries. Ripple Labs Inc. or Ripple contributed to and supports the submission made by the Digital Pound Foundation, which we already know they're a partner of. We write now to provide a short introduction of our company, including description of our interest in the space. We also offer several principles for consideration, which we think are relevant as the committee examines the main issues confronting HM Treasury and the Bank of England and exploring the potential for introduction of a CBDC within the UK. So uh, here they just give an introduction to Ripple. Um, they even talk about on-demand liquidity here. Cape ability leverages XRP. So they talk about the XRP cryptocurrency, the digital asset native to the XRP ledger, a distributed ledger platform as a bridge between fiat currencies, further reducing the friction and costs for commercial financial institutions to transact across multiple global markets. Not to mention their work uh, working on a pilot, announcing a pilot for a private version of the XRP ledger, uh, the CBDC private ledger. So they're also distinguishing between the public ledger and the private ledger. The CBDC private ledger is based on the same blockchain technology that powers the XRP ledger, which has supported the management of billions of dollars of value for over eight years with no significant security operational issues. The CBDC private ledger can be used for both payments and issuing currencies, and by leveraging the XRP ledger and associated RippleNet technologies, commercial financial institutions, and central banks. Also here, guys, uh, just uh, the final statement from that report. A public-private approach is needed to ensure maximum utility and CBDCs issued. So, um, the House of Lords... In the UK, fully supports Ripple, uh, not only Ripple, RippleNet technology, XRP, using XRP, that cryptocurrency, as a digital asset to provide liquidity. And, uh, you know, if you're not from that part of the world, if you're not from the UK, you might not know what the House of Lords is. House of Lords, formerly the Right Honourable, the Lord Spiritual and Temporal of the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland in Parliament, assembled also known as the House of Peers, is the upper house of the Parliament of the United Kingdom. So this is a governmental body in the UK, uh, the upper house of Parliament. Uh, you know, coming from Toronto, I always think when I think of House of Lords, I don't know if uh, maybe some of you guys are from Toronto and know about this, at the corner of Isabella and Young Street, there used to be a place called House of Lords. It was the hottest place to go to get your hair cut if you're in Toronto, and it was around for decades. This is a photo from the 70s. Um, and, you know, even up until a few years ago, they existed. They uh, unfortunately did close down, I think, before the beer flu hit. Nevertheless, those of you from Toronto probably know what I'm talking about. Anyway, House of Lords, though, in the UK, commenting on uh, the importance of Ripple. And so I didn't know about this from last fall. I wanted to thank Matthew L-I-N-Y for bringing that to my attention. Also, this guy's an article found by the Wrath of Kahneman. It talks about Ripple user Rhea money. Um, more than 280 million migrants globally send the money they earn in developed countries in the form of remittances back to their loved ones every single year. International remittances to low and middle income countries were over $600 billion last year, uh, far exceeding the aid provided to those countries by developed agencies and governments. So um, he's explaining here that remittances make up a lot of the uh, GDP of certain countries. Uh, for many developing countries, remittances contribute to more than 10% of GDP. In the case of Nepal, remittances represent 27% of GDP. And for Samoa, they contribute 32%. So obviously, uh, very important for uh, that system. If it is uh, part of a country's GDP, that flow has to be seamless. And uh, Ria Money is obviously acknowledging this fact. Continued digital expansion of money transfer space. So here's where he starts talking about Ripple partner Money Ria. The digital expansion of money transfer operators like Money Rea Transfer means a greater number of mobile wallets can be reached through the interoperability of bank payment systems, other wallets, fintech apps, ATMs, debit cards, and traditional over-the-counter cash points, bringing financial services like cross-border real-time payments to more people than ever. In the case of Rhea, 98% of payments to bank accounts throughout the world happen almost instantly. So obviously, Rhea money. Um, Ripple enabled, as we know, not relying on the old financial system uh, that would require Require Nostro and Vostro accounts, you know, a five uh, five day cross border transfer. Digital expansion is critical for the future of cross border money transfers industry. Yet today, 70% of customers continue 
continue to rely on brick and mortar channels, which, um, you know, that's going to change, especially with the proliferation of smartphones and uh, these uh, these new mobile companies providing uh, phone applications so that uh, companies can conduct these transfers through a RippleNet enabled online company. These are people with digital skills that uh, use other digital solutions, but prefer to transact across multiple channels, sometimes digital, sometimes physical. And so banking the unbanked, guys, this is, uh, you know, this is growing. The number of Colombians, for example, with a bank account grew to 86% at the first half of 2020, up from 82% at the end of 2019. So a 4% increase in just six months. Um, of course, this was over the time of the uh, the beer flu. And so uh, at that time, we, uh, we, we were starting to see that as a catalyst for the unbanked to become banked through uh, digital services. The World Bank estimates that the international remittances will grow an additional 3.8% this year. They are a crucial development tool that helps alleviate poverty. And so uh, they're also looking at their 2030 goals. We know 2030, that crucial date that uh, the World Economic Forum has been pushing. World Bank, again, another organization in the IMF, all these globalist uh, world organizations looking to push their sustainable development goals, 2030, banking the unbanked, one of those, ripple a huge piece of the puzzle to this. Uh, so anyway, this is a, quite a lengthy article. I will link it in the description if you guys are interested in reading further. Uh, but I just wanted to thank the Wrath of Kahneman for posting that. But I wanted to bring you guys this poll brought to us by Stefan Hubert. What do you guys think will happen next Tuesday? It's only two days away. I had some inclinations earlier this week. I did a video on it uh, a few days ago. I will link that up here if you guys didn't catch that. So do you think the judge will do another in-camera view, grant the SEC motion, deny the SEC's motion, or publicly humiliate the SEC? Well, you know, the result's fairly equal here. Um, I just picked one of them here. 23.3% uh, says the, uh, the judge will do another in-camera review. 24.5% says it will grant the SEC's motion, 227 says deny the SEC's motion, and 29.5% publicly humiliate the SEC. I mean, that's what we all want to see. Stefan here saying, you know, my prediction, she will order another in-camera review and ask the SEC how much additional time they want for that, and then she will voluntarily add another month just to make sure her judgment is good enough and then approve another SEC motion for reconsideration for ACP. Um, you know, we're still all kind of scratching our heads, wondering what is going to happen on June 7th. Considering we know the facts though, one, the judge said the emails are relevant. Two, Ripple's lawyers have suggested that XRP might be mentioned in those emails. And three, the SEC admits that Hinman didn't give the speech he was supposed to. The latest approved version of his speech is not public. So isn't that interesting? Uh, another tweet from Stefan Hubert just uh, pointing to that fact, a completely different question. When was the last time you sent your employer the final version of your speech you were supposed to give on their behalf, but never did? So here's just uh, some footnotes from some testimony here. While the final version of Director Hinman's remarks reflected in entry 11 is not publicly available, Director Hinman was required to provide the standard disclaimer as part of those remarks. So that's why he provided that disclaimer. And um, But as you guys can see, that final version was never submitted. And, uh, you know, Stefan brings up a good point here. How is it that they can just get away with this and uh, for it to be or for us to have to perceive that it is completely normal? Tipsy Tiger down here saying, Stefan, uh, when did the SEC admit Hinman didn't give the speech he was supposed to? I don't remember reading that anywhere. Can you please show me where that was admitted? Uh, Generation XRP uh, stating down here, I've been saying the speech was not followed. Hinman went off script one day, so his personal opinion. XRP was included, but they didn't investigate this crooked guy. Um, that's the crime of the SEC. Crypto Bag Boy down here saying, you know, maybe when Hinman said we find that BTC and Ethereum are decentralized enough, he wasn't referring to the SEC. Maybe he was just saying we, meaning the people paying him to say this. Maybe his attorney emailed him saying, Bill, that's not a good idea to give the speech. All speculation here, you know, possible things that could have happened. Um, nevertheless, we do know certain facts here. And um, we do know that Hinman did not release the final version of the speech. What else do we know? This coming from Mikkel XRP here on Twitter. This is why the SEC is desperately trying to say XRP has no utility. This entire case is a sham and the SEC knows it. Bringing up this document, guys, from Perkins Coy talking about security uh, security tokens, but once the token has achieved full functionality, it should be treated as a non-security. So this coming from lawyers associated with the SEC from Perkins Coy. We know about those connections too. Securities cannot be used in the way utility tokens are intended to be used, i.e. Uh, as micropayments, for example, or for micro tasks 
on a social network? Well, if you take a look at XRP, obviously it can be utilized uh, for all kinds of utility applications. So by this definition from Perkins Coy, the SEC's own lawyers, how can we consider XRP a security? Well, here's another theory, guys, brought to us by Jeremy Hogan here on Twitter. The Perkins Hinman speech is criticized for making up the requirements that when a utility tokens network is decentralized, the token ceases to be a security. But at least it provided a logical framework for analysis. That the SEC has completely abandoned it is telling. He goes on to say the Perkins memo does have logic to it. One, a sale of a utility token is a security and becomes not a security when the ledger is decentralized so that there is no reliance on the efforts of others. And this is obviously as per the Howey test. So, you know, if we take the XRP token as it is today, of course we know um, the XRPL decentralized. I mean, some may some may say that it's not. Uh, those are uh, the types of people that are uh, conveying FUD in the crypto community about Ripple and XRP. Obviously, those are also the types of people that have not done their research, or rather, maybe they do know that it is decentralized and they're just lying through their teeth. Uh, Jeremy Hogan goes on to say, this is the beginning of a logical framework, but it is how Hinman then manipulated it, and that is what is problematic. So we have Hinman here uh, going back and forth, kind of straddling the fence, and, you know, was it his personal opinion? Was it not his personal opinion? He's manipulating the situation. There is clearly... Uh, the beginnings, at least uh, at least as per Jeremy Hogan here, the beginnings of a logical framework. But Hinman then manipulated it, and this is where we're finding the problem. But the SEC quickly discarded this framework. It's as if it went too far, would have taken too much of the crypto space out of the SEC's grasp. So then there's this whole concept, you know, this this idea, Gary Gensler, as the head of the SEC and as, um, you know, a, a former MIT professor teaching about cryptocurrencies uh, before... He, uh, he was the chairman of the SEC. He obviously has this idea that the SEC is going to take full reign on cryptocurrencies because right now there a lot of them are considered securities and that's what the SEC is traditionally uh, regulated. So Gary Gensler wanting to take on the cryptocurrency market. Well, you know, there are people in Congress, there are already people saying... Uh, well, you know, maybe it's part of CFTC jurisdiction and not just SEC jurisdiction. Maybe there should be even, you know, another body altogether that regulates cryptocurrencies. And so, you know, his plan is kind of unraveling and it, from many different directions, I think. And to Jeremy Hogan's point here, they went too far. They gave it too clear of a definition. And so they wanted to step back a bit. And this is why we're getting uh, a bit wishy-washy on the Hinman speech. Um, so as far as it went too far, would have taken up too much of the crypto space out of the SEC's grasp. And that couldn't be allowed. And so all those points, super interesting to analyze and, uh, you know, think about considering what we know, uh, all the moving pieces to the puzzle. And not only that, Jeffrey Miller here also brings up a good point. This is why Hester Peirce's safe harbor proposal is so important. A protocol will not be decentralized until after a few years unless they have significant funding through VC or other means. The whole system is designed to keep the rich in control. But Ripple did go this route. Jeremy Hogan says, you know, good point. Seems that that's where her proposal grew from. So another very astute observation here, the Hester Peirce proposal obviously uh, came out after this whole debacle, after uh, she started to see problems with the SEC. But, you know, the thought goes as such. Is Gary Gensler taking on the torch from uh, his, his, his predecessor, Jay Clayton, and continuing to try to shape the industry so that the SEC has full control. And was this a misstep? And that's why they're backpedaling on the Hinman speech. Interesting observations here with regards to the case. Wanted to bring you guys this final clip from Willy Wonka XRP here on Twitter. Somebody put this together, I don't know who, but uh, I think it really sums it up quite nicely. This describes some crypto as securities. Which ones do you think of as securities? It's pretty clear, and the Supreme Court has actually spoken about this many times. Um, if, if somebody is raising money, selling a token... Start the Ether presale mm -hmm. in a couple of weeks. So the Ether presale will be an opportunity for anyone to purchase Ether. Where Ether is the internal currency inside of the Ethereum system, sort of like okay. the XRP and Rebel. And the buyer is, is anticipating prof profits. What we're hoping is, is that sort of similar to what happened with MasterCoin. If that slice is something, is something like 20%, and then the value of Ether goes up by five, then we basically have the, the entire initi initial BTC that we got all over again. Based on the efforts of that group. This About 100 people that are working on Ethereum right now. Myself uh, leading the, yeah, the, the protocol design. And we also have branding teams, we have marketing teams. 
that fits into something that's a security. And I'm not going to play the last 10 seconds because there's some copyrighted music added to it. Anyway, I will link this tweet in the description of the video for you. So what do you guys think? A misstep by the SEC trying to backpedal using Hinman's speech as an excuse? Tell me down in the comments what you guys think. And please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like the video if you like the content I'm providing. I always love hearing your comments. See you in the next one, guys.